Welcome to the pilot episode of King's Island History. Over the course of this web series, we'll be taking an in-depth look at King's Island Amusement Park, chronologically following its history from design and construction to the present day. This episode is just to test the waters and see if the idea floats, so if you enjoy it, or have any constructive criticism, please let me know in the comments down below. To start, today we'll be taking a look back at the King's Island and Miami Valley Railroad, a staple of the park since its opening and one of the most popular rides in the park's 46 year history. The attraction was custom built for Kings Island and was therefore not one of the almost 20 rides relocated from Cincinnati's Coney Island after it closed in 1971. But the ride's history still stretches back to America's finest amusement park and to 1964, when the old park opened the Coney Island and Lake Como Railroad. The new $200,000 ride took two years to plan and build and occupied the northern part of the park's property, crossing over the man-made Lake Como on a 462-foot wooden trestle and into a thick wooded area that the park had recently purchased. Passengers were transported back in time to the early 19th century and, from an advertisement of the new ride, saw authentic models of Indians wearing authentic costumes, sporting authentic roach hairdos, brandishing authentic weapons. Sounds pretty authentic. The ride scenery included animals like a wolf and buzzards, and pioneer settings such as a burning cabin with Native Americans and settlers shooting it out. The scenery was researched and created by the special effects company of Morrison, Colorado, which was headed by former MGM chief special effects designer Winifield Hubbard. The ride also traveled through two tunnels, which were used to store the trains at night and during the park's off-season. The ride had a combined 4,678 feet of 24-inch track. The trestle over Lake Como was laid on 20-foot piles that were sunk 14 feet deep into the lake bed. The small station had a Victorian style and was designed by University of Cincinnati graduate Darrell Daniel, who later did a lot of the initial design work for Kings Island. The building included gas lights taken from the Clifton area, and different antiques in the station's waiting room. Coney Island's railroad featured two engines, named the Mad Anthony Wayne and George Rogers Clark, both after military officers from the Revolutionary War. Each engine was approximately a 7 16th scale model of the 424 CP Huntington, which was built in 1863 and was the first locomotive purchased by the Southern Pacific Railroad. Each of Coney Island's engines weighed 5,445 pounds and was powered by a 58 horsepower gasoline engine, although engineers could squirt some oil onto the manifold to produce smoke. Each engine pulled five coaches, holding a total of 70 riders. The coaches and engines were manufactured by Chance Manufacturer of Wichita, Kansas. When Kings Island was being designed in the late 1960s, it would have been difficult to relocate Coney Island's railroad. Additionally, the new park had the opportunity to plus the previous ride and create something bigger and better. Much bigger. The new ride was called Kings Island and Miami Valley Railroad and was larger in every sense. For starters, the price tag. Coney Island's was $200,000, whereas Kings Island's was $700,000, the fourth most expensive ride at park opening. Coney Island's track was 24 inches, whereas Kings Island's was 36. Coney Island's was only 4,678 feet versus Kings Island's 1 and 1 eighth mile, or approximately 5,940 feet. Coney Island's engines were 7 16th scale replicas of an antique locomotive, versus Kings Island's engines being 2 3rd scale. Coney Island's also only pulled 5 cars per a train, whereas Kings Island's had 6 larger carriages. Finally, Coney Island's engines each weighed 5,445 pounds, whereas Kings Island's engine and tender weighed a combined 25 tons. Kings Island's rides featured two propane-fueled locomotives, both manufactured by the Crown Metal Products Company of Wyan, Pennsylvania, who also created locomotives for many other amusement parks in the 1960s and 70s. Kings Island's engines were scale replicas of the General, the subject of the great locomotive chase of the American Civil War. Each engine had a 400 gallon boiler, making them authentic steam locomotives. The engines were green number 19 and blue number 12, 
initially named after frontiersman Simon Kenton and Native American leader Tecumseh. Number 19 was the first engine delivered to the park and took its first ride in November of 1971. Number 12 arrived a few months later in February of 1972. The locomotives were serviced near the station in a maintenance building built specifically for the attraction. The structure initially only enclosed the engines with the carriages jetting out the back, but the building was later expanded to cover the full train. The carriages are painted green and red and typically match with the appropriate engine. On the side of each row is an emblem, depicting the engine's original namesakes. Like Coney Island's old ride, the railroad started at a Victorian-style station. Kings Island was identified as the Sonseville, the original name of Cincinnati. From there, the trains departed and meandered through the wooded landscape. Passengers crossed over a 45-foot natural ravine, and the layout was rerouted from the original plans to save choice white and red oaks. The ride was located on the south edge of the park property and traveled into what is today Soak City, completing a large turnaround before returning toward Rivertown. Guests on board saw buzzards, a small beaver gnawing at a tree, and figures of Native Americans and pioneers, relocated from Coney Island's ride. Unlike Coney Island's ride, though, this version had live actors. The performers would stage a brawl between Native Americans and pioneers, something which was not exactly politically correct. Like, at all. Actors were also originally used for a mock stagecoach robbery. This element was later removed, and around the mid-1970s, the performers began being phased out in favor of new fiberglass figures. The figures were built in-house by Kings Island sculptor Farrell Coffey, and included animals like a growling grizzly bear, still present to this day, and Native Americans and townspeople. Many of the characters' faces were modeled after park employees at the time. Some performers did remain, posing as Native Americans and engaging in a fight with soldiers at Fort McHale, a show seen on the ride similar to the one previously at Coney Island. Fort McHale was named after Ed McHale, the park's general manager. A small town was also added to the ride, featuring faux storefronts and fiberglass figures. The area also included the Golden Lamb Inn, a reference to the oldest hotel in Ohio and the only building in the town that included an interior. The space was initially used as an office, but is used today for storage. The only ride that Kings Island and Miami Valley Railroad initially interacted with was Kenton's Cove, the smaller of the two canoe attractions from opening year. This only lasted the first season, as in 1973, the canoes were replaced by Kenton's Cove Cubo Canal, an aero development hydro flume. Another ride was not added in the area until 1985, when Whitewater Canyon opened. The new water ride was almost entirely enclosed within the railroad's perimeter, part in a small segment where the boats traveled under the railroad through two 60-foot tunnels. The queue line and exit for the new ride crossed over the railroad track. The largest change to the railroad took place between the time the park closed for the 1988 season and reopened for Winterfest shortly after. More than 1,300 feet of railroad track was rerouted for the addition of Waterworks, a new water park. This changed the track's overall layout to 5,585 feet. With Waterworks opening in 1989, a new station was added to the railroad. This curved station was a simple concrete platform and did not include the Victorian-style structure found in Rivertown. Guests had the option of disembarking at Waterworks to enjoy the new area, or remaining on board and completing a round trip. With the 1989 reroute, the ride now wrapped around an old house that predated the park. Kings Island chose not to remove it, but instead hid it behind a new facade modeled off Fort Washington, an army fortress built in Cincinnati in 1789. The house was used for storage and remains to this day, although now in very poor condition. You can see the old driveway from on board the train, and maybe catch a glimpse of the structure through Fort Washington's cracks. A few rare pictures of the house did find their way online around 2007, showing how overgrown the structure was. Urban legend is that the original homeowner only agreed to sell his land if Kings Island agreed to never tear down the house. I don't know if there is any evidence of this being true, but the house remains untouched regardless. Around the 1990s, the two locomotives were renamed. Simon Kenton became Lou Brown, and Tecumseh was renamed Kenny Van Meter. 
Lewis Brown and Kenny Van Meter were former Kings Island Railroad engineers who began with the park in 1972. Both men were lifelong railroad enthusiasts and were in their 60s when they began operating the new locomotives. The fiberglass figures added in the mid-1970s were removed in the mid-1990s, possibly when Paramount purchased the park. With most seeming stripped from the ride, the train primarily served as a mode of transportation between Waterworks and Rivertown, with little to look at on the way. The second station in Waterworks likely saved the ride from removal. King's Dominion's similar ride, the Old Dominion Line, did not serve as a transport attraction and was removed after 1994. The train scenery changed in the early 2000s with the removal of Kenton's Cove Keyboat Canal. Through the 2001 season, visitors aboard the train watched the former water ride site become transformed into a new thrill ride. In 2002, Tomb Raider The Ride, later renamed The Crypt, opened on its spot. The train passed the attraction's large show building, on-ride photo booth, and queue and exit. In fall 2003, the train sported an overlay and was named the Pumpkin Patch Express. The family-friendly attraction incorporated a new stop midway between the Rivertown and Waterwork stations, and it featured a small pumpkin patch where park guests could choose their very own pumpkin. The attraction returned in subsequent years, and the platform was also used for the 6th annual Fear Fest in 2005, when Rivertown was transformed into the Curse of Sleepy Hollow. The area was themed after the 1999 Paramount film and included several new attractions, including Headless Hollow. Visitors would board the train in Rivertown and disembark into the woods. Shortly after, the train would conveniently break down at the Pumpkin Patch platform and guests would be forced to walk back to Rivertown through the Western Woods, otherwise known as Whitewater Canyon's exit path. The attraction featured different characters, including the Headless Horseman at the end. Headless Hollow was renamed Tombstone Territory in 2007 and used the train for the first part of the experience through 2014. The attraction returned one final season in 2015, but without utilizing the nearby railroad. With the initial return of Winterfest in 2005, the train resumed its wintertime operation. It had previously operated during the holiday event, but for the new incarnation of Winterfest, the ride was renamed White Christmas Express and feature new decorations like oversized postcards. Like the transition from Kenson's Cove Keyboat Canal to Tomb Raider The Ride, the train scenery drastically changed over the course of 2008 and again in 2016. The first instance was for Diamondback's construction, when the natural ravine was completely raised and the trees gave way to concrete footings. By the end of the summer, massive steel supports and maroon track began to appear. Diamondback, the park's tallest and fastest coaster ever, opened the following year and towered over the railroad. A similar construction project occurred in 2016, when many of the trees inside the railroad's perimeter were raised and construction began on Mystic Timbers, a new wooden roller coaster. The Whitewater Canyon entrance and exit were also relocated, introducing a new railroad crossing and requiring a ride operator to open and close the gate as needed. Mystic Timbers was manufactured by Great Coasters International of Sunbury, Pennsylvania, and opened in 2017. The new thrill ride crossed over the railroad twice and interacted with the passing trains. Today, almost 50 years after it first ran, the Kings Island and Miami Valley Railroad remains as popular as ever. The two engines can easily transport upwards of 2,300 guests an hour with a theoretical capacity of over 5,400. And, since its opening in 1972, the attraction has entertained over 54 million park visitors, the second most in Kings Island history.